Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of my deck building exercise. Now, I did expect this to be a success when I started it with the Waylon BABW uh, deck building exercise, but boy did I not expect it to explode like this. Thank you, thank you very very much for the warm reception. Um, yeah, I kind of thought it would be a hit. I didn't expect it to be so spot on. Um, a lot of you participated and it's a very overwhelming response. Um, and I think everyone has learned a thing or two fr from it. That's the most important thing. If um, you're one of them, great job. Let's carry on with today's deck building. Uh, this will be the last in the series of one of each, fa each faction. We've already covered Wayland, NBN, and Jinteki, so today we'll finish off with Hasbaroid. For those of you who haven't been with me for the deck building exercises, here's the recap. I give you a deck building idea. You go to Netrunner DB, you make a 49 card deck uh, f based on the idea that I gave you. And then uh, when you're done, you can continue watching the video, watch my playthrough, and at the end, I'll show you my deck list and we can compare and contrast. As usual, my deck list is by no means a model answer. There are many different possibilities out there, and your deck might be more suited for your meta than mine. So um, it's just a learning experience for everyone, and we'll hopefully give you uh, the impetus to look more critically at your deck building uh, routine. So let's start with the HP idea. Surat's in HB. Well, just like how um, Boom and Scorched Earth are more NBN cards than Wayland cards, Surat City Grid is certainly more of a HB card than a Wayland card itself. That's what Wayland's known for, right? It's not even a proper faction. All its cards are meant to be exported. Surat is great in HB for two different reasons. Firstly, it can combine with Next Ice. This allows you to rest ice. Uh, when the runner doesn't really want to rest them um, and give your next size more strength and more subroutines. So this is a very good way to get your next size rest when your opponent is playing very passively or only focusing on one server. Another use of Surat City Grid is to turn on Brain Taping Warehouse. Uh, typically with Brain Taping, a runner can play around it by running on their last click or by running with fewer clicks left. With Surat City Grid, you can trigger Brain Taping at the start of the runner's turn, thereby giving yourself the 4 credit discount on every single ice you rest with the Surat City Grid, which is going to be a lot. So, today's deck idea is to build based on Surat City Grid and using one of these two options, either going for the next size route or the brain taping route. Now, by doing this, you are more or less locking yourself into playing a Glacier deck, and a Glacier deck typically runs a Defended Remote, so you need something to chuck in the remote. I would suggest um, adding one of these uh, powerful assets here, Economy Assets, all these are in some way, shape, or form, economy assets, which is very important. Even though next dice is cheap, or you are getting Bioroid res discounts using Brain Taping Warehouse, you still have to pay money to advance your agendas because that's probably going to be your win condition. You also need need money to defend against some runner strategies like Account Siphon. So you would want to play one of more of these cards: Adonis Campaign, Assembly Lines, G's Model Bioroids. Everything else is up to you. As is uh, the case with typical HP decks, it's mostly just ice and money. So there's not a lot of room for creativity. But uh, I still want to give, I still want you to give uh, your full thought into what sort of ice suite you want to build and what sort of economy package you want to build around and what sort of win condition you're trying to uh, target towards. So pause the video now and go build your deck on Netrunner DB. Once you're done, join me for the playthrough and deck review. Today's game is against Omar, and I will be playing the next uh, Seracity Grid. Um, I keep my opening hand because there are no agendas, which looks good, and there's ice, enough to protect HQ against a turn 1 siphon, and um, to protect my G's model wireroids, which is my main econ engine slash win condition. So I do like this arrangement. Oh, turn 1 siphon! Called it. Okay, so this is basically the best case scenario. I rest the Eli, my opponent thinks he can get through for the nice juicy siphon, but wait, I rest Jeeves. Now I'm on one credit. That siphon looks a lot worse. Uh, more importantly, because my opponent's not wizard, they cannot trash the Jeeves. Not without incurring a huge tempo loss. So this is what I really love about um, having Jeeves in my back pocket. It's cheap enough to rest, and Eli 
baiting the double click spending. This sets my opponent very far back in terms of tempo, only getting a single HQ access, that's not good. And moreover, my opponent isn't, um, this is why you run wizard if you want to play siphon decks. You lose 3 influence as Omar, but more importantly you lose um, the ability to contest assets. If someone's playing asset spam, you'll never get a siphon off. Now my opponent shows the Orbellus early, that's why they didn't go to trash the Jeeves, and starts hammering R&D. No medium though, they're too poor to install it. So this gives me some time to set up, but instead of icing up R&D, worried about a medium threat, I instead go for the ice on HQ. I have to respect the possibility of a deja vu siphon or a same old siphon. So I cannot simply ice R&D and take credits there. This is pretty obvious to me. Now because my opponent gave me the Jeeves, I'm actually more than content um, to take the same turn every single turn, which is take 3 credits, trigger Jeeves, and then install ice. Uh, whatever I draw. In this case, the Mother Goddess on R&D. This protects R&D from a medium because my opponent's now on 3 credits. If they have the medium in hand, they can slap it down and run 3 times, which would basically end the game for me. Given that they're Omar, if they have 3 medium counters, the next turn they can simply run Archives, which is bad. Now they run R&D here. They, I, it looks like they do have a medium. Pressuring me to use uh, the ice there. So I play the Mother Goddess, I res it, and they do an Omar run on HQ with a nerf agent installed. Now I don't really give too much of a damn uh, about a nerf agent because my opponent's just way, way too poor to contest even the assets and upgrades in my hand. They see the Surat City Grid, a bit of a question mark there. What the heck is he doing? Well, I'm just going to leave it in hand for now, it's not going to do much at this point. The problem with Surat City Grid strats, whether you build a next deck, or a brain taping deck yourself, as uh, you will see, is when you actually play the deck, you'll realize that you can't get as much mileage out of Surat as you dreamed of. And this is perfectly normal. It's not because your strat is work not working, it's because any good runner will force you to rest ice, they will pressure you, so you're not gonna get that dream uh, 6 ice tower res on that Surat brain taping combo. If you were building your deck towards that one big combo, that's a big mistake. Any good runner will pressure your centrals. So you have to rest your eyes here. I'm going to pay the full price for the Turing here and just keep the runner out. I don't want them to get free accesses because this translates into free card draw for, for them. Um, with a nerf agent out, my opponent will definitely hammer my HQ and while I don't mind him hitting my HQ, I do mind him getting card draw. This is why I rest the Turing. So now with my centrals sealed off, I start drawing two agendas. A bit of a worry here. Um, but there's a bigger worry on my mind, that is the account siphon. It could come anytime, and I really want to defend against it. it I'm still good for now. I don't think my opponent is capable of um, performing a siphon next turn, given that they need that paperclip or barrier breaker equivalent um, to get past double Eli HQ. So I was happy to just take credits that turn, but now things change. I'm going to click for 3 credits and then install a CVS on HQ. The CVS is a way for me to dump credits in case I get hit by a siphon. Um, in retrospect, this was probably not enough because resing CVS and Eli still puts me in siphon range. So this is something I need to take note of. I probably should have done an install with Surat City Grid instead, but we'll see that a bit later. My opponent now finally attempts to contest the um, G's, which I keep him out of with the next bronze. This is why I like the next dice. It just says straight up no to anyone who fails gear checks, allowing me to get this um, early drip economy off. It's like pet campaign, I'm gaining a credit every turn because I'm clicking for 3 credits and then installing something. Um, it is actually much efficiency. Um, <laughs> much more than it seems like. So here I'm going to install the Architect on Archives because right now it looks too tempting for my opponent to install Black Orchestra which I believe they have in their bin by now. Um, and then just hammer HQ. By hammering HQ they'll get a lot of accesses, two accesses from Nerf Agent and the CVS on HQ giving them a lot of Obelus draws. I want to prevent that so Architect goes there. Unfortunately this means that R&D is left to be compromised as a spoon hits the Mother Goddess. And I can see an excess there, but that's fine, there's no medium out, so I'm still good for now. But I do need to find the next piece of ice to put on R&D ASAP. Again, Spoon is not really a concern. My opponent had to pay 5 to get the orchestra going on the Mother Goddess, and then another 2 for the Spoon, putting them back down at 1 credit. You see the amount of damage I can do by just limiting my opponent's account siphons. With this sort of HQ, you're never going to land a siphon. I have conveniently joined to my next piece of ice, and I was thinking of putting it on R&D, but um, 
I didn't have to worry too much about medium at this point. My opponent doesn't show any good signs of having medium, and I do have a CVS on HQ anyway, so instead I go for the Vitruvius score here. Why do I score this? Because I want to put myself within unsiphonable range. If my opponent attempts to make a siphon play at this point, they're not going to get very far. Their only option right here is to go for R&D, the most likely defended server. But that's fine. I can concede a few uh, accesses here and there, knowing full well that I have ice ready for installation next turn, and my opponent just doesn't have the tempo to contest the next bronze. They have to pay 3 for it! This is what you get when you spend all your influence on siphons. Uh, you're using crappy breakers that you can't really uh, pressure R&D with. And again, another reason why I was able to score Biotic there is because I had recovery in hand. Lateral growth allows me to burst in credits. I choose not to install lateral growth here because paperclip is now in the bin. My opponent can now go for the account siphon. I want to make sure that I can dodge siphons from this point onwards. So I force my opponent out of R&D with the next bronze but I know that they can get in next turn. That's gonna be four excesses. We don't want that. So I have a couple options here. I could put Magna on R&D. I could purge and get a Jeeves click. I have a lot of options. I choose to install three cards this turn. I want Jeeves efficiency, so this is why I install three cards, gaining me a click to gain a credit. The other reason I install three cards here is because I want to defend both HQ and R&D at the same time. Magna on R&D gives me medium defense. Surat on HQ gives me siphon defense. I can offload credits by resing ice using Surat. Unfortunately, I was forced to install a third card. I didn't really have anything better installed than the Jeeves, and this gives me my opponent a good target for Dirty Laundry. This is bad. I usually am good by sealing all my servers, but by giving my opponent an avenue to Dirty Laundry, they now have 12 credits to their name. This is a very scary amount. They can threaten any central server of their choice. Um, so I'm really thinking about this here. I could use Vitruvius counter for the Biotic, and then Biotic the Vitruvius, kind of like an Astro Train here. That would put me at a very poor position. I'll be very poor. I won't be able to defend R&D very well. So after some thought, um, we'll see what I do here. Um, in the meantime, yes, um, one interesting thing about this deck is that it doesn't run the standard HP Agenda Suite of 3 Beta Tests and 3 Vitruvius. This deck actually runs 3 Sales Team and 3 Vitruvius because of the extra click from Jeeves. Vitruvius with the extra click gives you the ability to get uh, Vitruvius counters which is amazing. And with Corporate Sales Team, you are able to fast advance them like regular 3 tools once you have a Jeeves out. These two agendas are much more stronger and more reliable than standard ABT, which is why I'm using 3 copies of each. Now my opponent sieges me with an account siphon as expected, and I go for the defense. I'm going to res CVS here to offload my credits. Unfortunately, stupid me, I forgot that Surat City Grid does not work on CVS. It doesn't trigger. See, uh, Surat only pro uh, triggers on cards in or protecting the server. In the server refers to assets and upgrades uh, in remotes, but not upgrades in HQ or any central because these are considered to be the root of the server. Very subtle rules difference there. Basically what this means is I cannot get a Surat trigger on CVS, I can only get a Surat trigger off Eli, resing the Eli during the run. Uh, so this cascades into something else. I can use the Eli trigger to res another ice that is either on R&D or archives. I have to think pretty hard for this one. Magnet gives a lot. I can res Magnet for one or Architect for two. Architect seems like a f better choice given that um, that will allow me to re uh, put my credit level at a lower level. Um, what I also should have done here was to not res a CVS. This would have possibly baited my opponent into running the full server. Um, yeah, that would be ideal for me. Um, instead, my opponent, after seeing me offload all my credits, decides to jack out and not even break the subroutines on the first Eli, which was very disappointing. Um, I was hoping my opponent would spend more of their resources here on a fruitless HQ run. There's nothing much in HQ for them to pick. If they take the Vitruvius, not the worst deal. They'll hit the CVS anyway and do my purging work for me. So that's good. Anyway, they avoid that nasty fate because I forgot about these rules interactions and as a reward my opponent gets to spoon my R&D. I can't defend this. My next bronze goes in the bin. They get to see 4 cards here. Actually, uh, no, they get to see 2 cards here. Yeah, I allow them to see 2 cards. 2 cards is nothing. This is not worth spending a CVS on. Passing the turn over to me, 
Oh, my opponent access arc knocked down on the last click. I take a quick glance at the bin and I think it's pretty obvious why I arc knocked down here. Can you think of why I'm gonna arc knock down? You probably can. This one's a very obvious choice. I don't know about you, but against a siphon deck, if you see all of the siphons in the bin and you lock them down, you are probably gonna win this game. So I basically completely utterly shut down my opponent's HQ pressure. Sure they have nerf agent, but without the siphon, um, sooner or later they won't be able to amass the money needed to contest my R&D, which is where the win's gonna come from. I still have to hold out the mid game though. It's a bit troubling because I'm pretty poor and I don't have the ice that I need to defend R&D. It's only 3 credits for my opponent to break through each turn and they're getting more and more medium tokens. I allow them to see 3 cards this turn knowing that I have to weather the storm for a couple more turns. Hopefully by allowing them to sift through my R&D, trash assets, steal agendas, I'll be able to draw my ice quicker which will allow me to get back in the game quicker. I draw into my 3rd Jeeves, this is not going to really help. So pretty tough choice here, I'm not sure what I do, I click for credits, take the Jeeves and take another credit. Um, knowing full well that the Siphons are out of play, I can now safely get as rich as I want. Knowing that my opponent cannot take advantage of my credits for their credit pool. Um, so, so yeah, um, another possible option at that point was to purge virus counters and trigger Jeeves to take an extra credit, that would have been fine as well. But because I knew I had the CVS, I was okay with just taking credits. I was gonna pop it when my opponent accessed that run, uh, resetting the 3 medium down to 0. So a lot of money spent on my opponent for not much progress, they're not seeing any fresh cards, and they don't really have economy in the deck, they're very very reliant on, those si on their siphon spam. So now I'm just going to get back to my routine of take 3, install, take 3, install. It's a uh, hard efficiency right there. It's almost reminiscent of the old days of um, HB decks which used to run uh, Gila Hands instead of G's model Baroids. So you take 3, install, take 3, install. It's very uh, consistent tempo right there. Uh, my opponent goes for R&D and spends most of their money going bankrupting themselves to get an MK Ultra into... Uh, my server, which is now 6 to break. 6 is still somewhat reasonable. Um, I can't really be affording to purge every turn, except that I can because I have Jeeves online. With Jeeves online, I can afford to purge every turn and still make progress. Of course, I won't be purging every turn, but um, I, I will still be gaining tempo over my opponent who does not have any form of drip economy or drip draw. Uh, aside from the Orbalus. So even though I'm purging half the time, even if I have to purge half the time for that matter, I'm still coming out way ahead of my opponent who doesn't have any good economy at all. If my opponent is running Temujin, it might be a different story. So, what do I do here? My opponent has only two medium counters, but the next R&D run is going to let them see three. That's a big problem. But I know that they can't get really get into R&D. And if they do, I'm going to just put the CVS on R&D here. This is what the Vitruvius counter is for. Now normally I'll use the Vitruvius for a biotic, but given that I'm going to dig through my deck sooner or later, I'm surely going to find the next biotic in quick time, and if I can't, there's always a Jackson to reshuffle biotic bank to R&D. Long story short, I do not really need the biotic right now. All I need to do is to make sure that my opponent can't get enough excesses. I can starve this guy out. Omar is too poor to be running all the time. Um, if he goes out too often, he might get hit by potatoes, and Omar doesn't can't really take too many hits from potatoes, as you know. So he has to stay at home, and this means that he can't run that much. And I'm happy about that. As long as he's not running, I'm gaining credits, I'm gaining cards, I'm gonna win sooner or later. We'll slowly drag this out. Remember, my opponent has no clot, so it's very easy for me to bow take agendas out for the win. Now they could siege HQ, that's something I need to be careful about. Can't be hoarding too many agendas in hand, nerf agent is there. But so far I've been very fortunate, I haven't been drawing many agendas at all. If I had been, I would have to start using the Jackson in my hand to clear agendas. Anyway, my opponent realizes realizing that R&D is a futile effort, uh, it costing 6 to break every time, and me having infinite <laughs> purging, decides to go for HQ instead. After all, I haven't been scoring too many agendas recently, this seems like a good idea. Unfortunately, he can't even run through R&D in one fell swoop. He has to knife the first Eli, and then come back for the second Eli with the same old knife. So in the meantime, I'm going to clear agendas from my hand and hopefully draw into the biotech I've been waiting for. 
Uh, hyper draw here. Finally find the biotech. Time to shuffle agendas back in deck. But which agenda do I attempt to score? The Vitruvius or the sales team? Sales team gives me 10 credits. Vitruvius gives me biotech recursion. I go for the sales team here because... I don't know. <laughs> this might be a mistake. The Vitruvius is probably a better target. Um, having Biotics on tap is always very nice, and it could always change to a sales team later on anyway. I would like to have kept both, don't get me mistaken. That would have been the best choice, but given that my opponent is doing this right now, I think just keeping one agenda in hand is the right play. So all my HQ eyes go, but at this point I don't really need HQ eyes anymore because I'm just going to chain Biotics for victory. My opponent misses the agenda, so I'm going to be able to score the sales team next turn, and you bet I will. Accessing the Surat City Grid, my opponent treasures it, which is a mistake. Given that my opponent's running Obelus, they want to actually keep the, the Surat Grid, which isn't doing much work at all, on HQ, so that when they run HQ, they draw two cards off Obelus, because Obelus draws cards based on how many cards you access, and this includes upgrades. Um, you notice by this point that I'm actually not really playing into my Surat City Grid strategy. And I think you should expect this. As I mentioned earlier, against a deck that has so much central pressure, one like Omar, which can pressure Archives in addition to siphoning HQ and mediuming r and I'm forced to rest ice at every single juncture, even if that means uh, making myself broke. I don't have a choice. That's how it is. So you shouldn't really expect Surat to... Uh, fire off every game, and this is why in this particular deck I'm actually running two copies of Surat instead of three. It is nice to have, but it's certainly not essential to my deck. Even though I propose this as a deck building idea, it is not something I'm completely basing my deck around. It's good in certain situations such as just now, where you saw me use Surat City Grid to offload my credits to duck the siphon. But in most, in quite a lot of cases actually, Surat is actually, actually detrimental to you. I actually don't really want to fire Surat against Omar because this opens my eyes, this reses them, meaning that he can more easily use cutlery on them. In fact, against most Anarchs, Surat is actually a liability. This is why it is not a competitive card. Still, it is worth playing around with um, as I'm doing this game, and I, can, and I did show you how I was able to use Surat for some niche purposes. Besides the intended purpose of pumping up next dice, I was able to use it to duck siphons. Um, yeah, um, this deck is more based on solid fundamentals of HB between fast advance and just piling ice in the right locations at the right time. I should be able to get this victory out sooner or later. My opponents just starved on R&D. They can run HQ, but they know that if agendas come in my hand, they are going to go out straight away with Baltic Labor once drawn. Um, of course, this is not in due time, you will observe my opponent run a couple more times before conceding, realizing that they have no way to win. Um, efficiently given their deck and given that the siphons were locked down. So instead, I'm gonna spend this time to talk a bit about my ice suite for this particular next size Surat City Grid deck. So the synergy is obviously with the next size, so obviously you play three silvers, three bronze, and a mother goddess. No next goals here because um, I don't really have the influence to run Marcus Batty. If you are going for a Marcus Betty strat, you are better off ditching the Surat City Grid to free out influence. I'm also running Architect because Architect's really amazing right now, it is immune to Parasite, uh, and by extension Parasifer. Um, also, it's a very punishing phase check early on, which complements your next dice very nicely. The problem with next dice is that your opponent can play very aggressively, run your centrals, and you're forced to rest the ice, which have no phase check punishment. The Architect threat um, allows you to further your game if they check the wrong server. I also make an interesting choice to uh, play three Eli's. Um, Eli has been an ice that dropped out of the meta for the most part. Two reasons. Firstly, paperclip, too efficient. Second reason, no face check punishment. A deck like Dumble Fox can easily just bounce off a rest Eli and then proceed to knife and double click through it, rendering the Eli rather useless. I play it in this deck because it's only three to reds. It still has an incredible res cost uh, for its strength and bulkiness. When combined with Surat City Grid, it's only one to rest, which is really appealing, getting a 66% discount on the Eli. So I ran three copies of it. Moreover, I had the extra influence to spend, so there wasn't much better ice uh, things that I could spend it on, so why not spend it on Eli? Seems like a pretty good investment to me, and it definitely did its work in keeping Omar out of HQ this game. Double Turing is a response to the myriad of AI decks out there between Artman Zero Cipher and Faust Cipher. 
um, Turing is able to keep your opponents out of either centrals or your remote, whichever you prefer. Finally, we have a singleton magnet. I would like to run more magnets, but the get deck is starting to become very saturated with cold gates. Magnet is absolutely amazing in conjunction with Surat City Grid, and you definitely should be running at least two in your deck. I know I should be. Uh, props to you if you have that in your deck. For those of you who didn't see the interaction, if you have Surat City Grid and a way to trigger Surat City Grid on your own volition with a magnet, unrest magnet anywhere on the board, you basically have a magnet on a stick. Anytime someone throws a parasite on your ice, you can immediately rest Surat and trigger the chain reaction to rest magnet and then immediately suck the parasite away from it. Even if the magnet's on a different server from where the parasite was, it's that amazing. Um, and yeah, in this current meta where Parasifer is rampant, I would certainly run more magnets than this. Now that we have talked about the ice, let's move on to the win condition of this deck. As I mentioned, uh, as you might have noticed, this deck is all in on the fast advance. If you notice, with G's model Bioroids hogging your scoring remote, you don't really have space to jam agendas. Another problem I find with the typical jammy HB route is that um, you don't really want to be scoring agendas. The HP agendas are nice in that they are 3-2s, so you can never advance them, but in general, uh, what they end up doing is costing you valuable tempo and giving your opponent a chance to siege your centrals. So I would much prefer um, using Baltic Labor to score agendas, but I want to score agendas that actually help my game, not just blank 3-2s. And this is where G's Model Wireroids comes in as uh, a superior win con for me. It allows me to score, as I mentioned earlier, either Vitruvius to recur Biotics or Sales Team for extra money. Another thing you notice is that all my Wincon cards, aside from Biotic Labor of course, all have alternative usage, double usage. They can do something else as well. This extra utility gives my deck a much more well-rounded uh, matchup against uh, most runner decks. Jeev serves as Drip Economy while hogging the remote, so it's not uh, rendering my remote eyes completely useless and a waste of my time. CVS um, defends me against deep digs as you saw this game, but it also allows me to purge Claude, which is my win condition. Claude def uh, prevents my win condition, CVS gets rid of that. And then we have Arc Lockdown. Uh, it helps my win con because it permanently gets rid of Claude, but it also serves in other matchups, particularly the Criminal and Anarch ones, to get rid of Levy and Siphon. Uh, Friends in High Places is my win con because it allows me to stick G's Model Bioroids on the table. Guess what? If I keep recurring those G's Model Bioroids behind a single piece of ice, you're not going to find the tempo to trash all of them. So um, that's my win con right there, but it also serves to help uh, defend me against ice destruction. If all my next silvers are getting trashed by parasites, well, guess what? They're coming back. So this double utility with all my win con cards gives me a rather well rounded deck. What about the economy? I still have a lot of deck slots for economy because I didn't uh, spend deck slots on cards like Brain Taping Warehouse which only have a single use, I can actually spend the rest of my deck slots on improving the consistency of my deck. Now I'm running Blue Level and Lateral Growth because they synergize with G's Model Bioroids. You didn't get to see them this game because I didn't really draw Blue Levels at the right time. But if you play Blue Level into Lateral Growth, you would have gained um, 5 credits you would have installed a card and you would have gained a Jeeves click while doing so. It's mad efficiency. So this is why I chose those um, operations, those particular operations. They synergize with the Jeeves model bioroids which I'm building around. Then you also have standard hedge fund, Surat which is also which discounts your eyes but it's very conditional so I won't really consider it as a econ card. And then you have sales team which as I mentioned allows you to score a, uh, two points without losing too much tempo. So all these cards are rather small econ cards. Um, aside from the agenda, they all give very little money. G's, bio, uh, G's model bioroids doesn't pay out as much as an Adonis. Blue level is nothing compared to restructure and so on. But this is why I run so many copies of econ cards. I run um, 13 econ cards if you include Surat City Grid. And that doesn't even include the CST. Moreover, I'm running HB Engineering the Future, which I should also give a shout out to. Um, I think everyone has built an ETF deck. If you haven't, um, I don't know. What are you building? Foundry doesn't actually synergize with Surat that well. I mean, you get double triggers with Surat, which is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I'll see your deck on a case-by-case -case basis. But in general, right now, I don't think 
um, you play any other ID if you are building a good deck because honestly, ETF, too much money, never a bad thing. So for those of you who built a brain taping this instead, here's a sample list that I actually built and tried out a bit myself. Um, I wasn't very impressed with it, I'm not going to lie. And I've highlighted some problems again, uh, earlier, but I'll repeat it again. Basically, brain taping and surat take up too many deck slots. When you take away all the mandatory deck slots, which is agendas, 16 ice, your brain taping combo, the Jacksons, and friends in high places, you want to run three friends because um, getting the surat and brain taping to stick is pretty hard without friends. And friends installs two cards, so it's an obvious synergy there. Once you include all these mandatory cards, you realize you only have 13 slots left to play with of which you need to spend most of them on economy. And as a general guideline, as I said, you usually want 9 economy cards. And even then, 9 is very little for a deck that runs such big baroids as this one. When you're done with economy, you realize that, oh wait, I still have to deal with my win condition. I want to run Biotech Neighbor maybe?